Hi, and welcome to this section on variables and memory references. And in fact, we'll see very shortly that variables are memory references. So first, let's talk about memory a little bit, and we'll do a conceptual diagram of memory. And we can think of memory as a series of slots or boxes that exist in our computer, and we can store and retrieve data from those slots. We can also compare it to the mail system. Now, when you send a letter to somebody, you usually have to write an address on that letter. And that address corresponds to a unique mailbox somewhere in the world. And by writing that address, you make sure that the contents of your letter is delivered to that mailbox. And it's pretty much the same in computers. And with memory, we need a unique address for each of those slots. And typically, they're just numbers. So we can number them arbitrarily, 1000, 1001, 1002, and so on. And those are called memory addresses. Now, when we store data in memory addresses, we may actually use more than one slot at a time. Certain amounts of data will fit nicely inside a single slot, but those slots have a finite amount of space. But as long as we know where the object starts in memory, that's good enough. And so, for example, object number one is stored at address 1000. Now it overflows into another memory address, let's say 1001. Same thing with object number two. Object number two starts at memory address 1002 and overflows into two more of those slots. Object number three happens to fit precisely in one slot and it's at address 1005. And that is called the heap. And storing and retrieving objects from the heap is taken care of for us by something called the Python Memory Manager, which we'll look at in more detail in a later lesson. So let's take a look at what happens when we write a line of code such as myval1 equals 10. So let's bring back our conceptual diagram of memory, and here we have those empty slots. So when we execute the statement myval1 equals 10, the first thing Python does is it creates an object in memory at some address, let's say a thousand, and it stores the value 10 inside that object. And myval1 is simply a name, an alias, if you will, for the memory address where that object is stored, or the starting address of the object if it overflows into multiple slots. And so myval1 is said to be a reference to the object at address 1000. Now you'll note myval1 is not equal to 10. Myval1, in fact, is equal to 1000 in this case. But 1000 represents the memory address of the data we're actually interested in. So as developers, when we write code, we kind of think myval1 is equal to 10. And for all practical purposes, it is. But we have to remember myval1 is not equal to 10. It is a reference to an object at that location. Similarly, if we write myval2 equals hello, it first gets created and stored somewhere in memory, let's say at address 1002. And if it overflows into more slots, that's fine. And myval2 now becomes an alias or a reference to that memory address. And we say that myval2 references the object at address 1002. So again, it's kind of important to understand variables in Python are always references. And they're references to objects in memory. So in Python, we can find out what the memory address is of a variable by using the id function. Now, it's not something you will typically be using as you write Python programs, but we will be using it quite a bit in order to understand what's happening in the Python programs we run, and especially what is happening to variables as we pass them along in our code throughout their lifetime. It is important to understand what's really happening. 
So the ID function will return a base 10 number, and if you want, you can convert that to a hex number by using the built-in hex function in Python. So for example, if we have a equals 10, we can find the hexadecimal version of the memory address of a by printing out hex of id of a. So let's take a look at a quick example in Python and see how that works. Okay, so let's create a variable. Let's say my var equals 10. So now we've created this variable. And remember, what's really happening is that 10 was saved somewhere in memory and my var is now a reference to that object. Now we can print out my var and we can see it returns 10. Now what actually happened is that Python looked at my var, it then looked at what is the memory address that my var is referencing, it found that memory address, it went to the memory, retrieved the data from memory, and then brought it back so that we can display it in our code. So we can look at the memory address by using the id function. So we can look at the memory address of my var by using the id function. And there we go. It's this big number there, 17183485288. Now, when you run this code, you probably won't get the same number right, because the memory addresses will be different. In fact, if we rerun this code later on, um, we'll have a different memory address. We can also print the hexadecimal version of the memory address by uh, using the hex function, passing it the ID, which is the decimal version of the memory address of my var. And when we run that, we get a slightly shorter number, which is why I like using the hex versions. So 666BEAF0. Now let's do another one. Let's do greeting equals, let's use a string this time. Okay, so we have greeting equals hello. We can print it out. Okay, so we'll print it out. There we go. It retrieved the data that was at the memory address referenced by greeting. Now what is the memory address? Well, we can look it up. And this big number here, which as you can see is different from the memory address of my var. If we want the hex version, we just do hex of id of greeting. And there we go, that's the hex number for the memory address that greeting references. All right, so bottom line, variables are just memory addresses. They're not actually equal to the value we think they're equal to. Logically, we can think of it that way, but in real terms, they're memory references. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.